There is a larger discussion going on about storms like this one and what role climate change plays in them. Joining me now, Republican Congressman Carlos Scarbello of Florida. His district includes southwestern Miami, the Florida Keys, the Everglades, all at severe risk of rising sea level. Congressman, thank you for being here with us. And I want your reaction first to this from the president just yesterday. Listen. There is something there, uh, man-made or not. I mean, there's something there. And it's going to go, and it's going to go back and forth, but there is something there. But again, uh, 50 years ago, it was brutal. 1890s were brutal. You have different times. And uh, the main thing is we have to make sure things get brought back to perfect condition. That's what we're doing. What is your reaction to the president there? Poppy, good morning from Miami, and thank you so much for this opportunity. Look, it's disappointing because we know uh, that human beings contribute significantly to climate change. We know that warmer global temperatures are related uh, very directly, are caused by increased carbon dioxide emissions and other greenhouse gas emissions, and we're starting to see the consequences of that in parts of the country like mm -hmm. South Florida. I had this conversation with the president in April when he visited Key West. I mm -hmm. told him uh, what a big issue it was for us down here. I told him that this required a response from the Congress and from the government. And the president listened respectfully, but he lacked that sense of urgency. I think that complete understanding of what exactly we're facing and what we need when, in when Congress you... is Republicans and Democrats who will work on this issue in a sincere and in a focused way to deliver mm -hmm. the kind of solutions that are necessary. So you say the president lacks a clear understanding um, of, of, the, of the science here. Uh, Marco Rubio, uh, your fellow Republican senator from Florida, said just two days ago on this network with Jake Tapper, uh, he talked about the importance of mitigating the impact that we're seeing here, says we don't know what percent of climate change is driven by humans. But then he said something that really struck us. He said, I'm also not going to destroy our economy. That's a quote from him. He is arguing there is a line to walk here to address the impact of climate change and policies that can help curb it, but also not to destroy the economy at the same time. Where do you fall on that? Is he right? I think that makes a lot of sense. We're not proposing, or I, don't, I hope most people in this country aren't proposing, for example, confiscating uh, people's uh, vehicles, gasoline-powered vehicles, which most of us drive. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't want to displace millions of workers uh, you know, in a year. Uh, what we need to have is a balanced approach. And I filed legislation in Congress a few months ago. It's called the Market Choice Act. Yeah. It actually well, delivers tax relief. Uh, to drivers, to people at the, who, who fill up at the gas pump, but it mm -hmm. also prices cars. Right. You, and it you basically the American consumer to fix this problem. You basically replace the gas tax, uh, and you you it pours money into infrastructure spending, which is sort of a carrot to your fellow Republicans. You replace that with the tax on carbon, which is anathema to many of them. But I have to ask you, Congressman, because it was just two years ago in 2016 when you actually supported a House Republican resolution opposing a tax on carbon. So, so your critics who say that, you know, you're in a very dangerous district, you're in the political fight of your life in a district that Hillary Clinton won by 16 points, you are now supporting something and have put forth legislation to tax carbon that you opposed two years ago. Why now? Well, that resolution at the time asked a very simple question. Is a carbon tax good or bad for the economy? Viewed in isolation, any tax obviously hurts economic growth. But what we did after that vote was we got to work, and over a year's time, we, we built this balanced approach, a price on carbon, relief at the gas pump, investment in infrastructure, uh, a, a rolling moratorium on EPA regulations as long as uh, carbon dioxide reduction goals are being met. Uh, our modeling shows that we beat uh, the uh, reduction goals in the Paris mm -hmm. Agreement, in the Obama administration's clean power plan. So we were able to show what carbon pricing in, in context can do okay. and how it can actually so, lead to more economic growth. So that's the big difference. And that's what we need in on, Washington, D.C., Poppy, members of Congress who are willing to build these solutions out rather than just take positions. And look, yes and or no. you, you have partnered with a Democrat, Ted Deutsch uh, of Florida, on some of these issues. So a bipartisan outreach there. But on September 12th, um, when he toured the Everglades in your state, your district, Republican nominee for governor, Ron DeSantis in Florida, said, quote, maybe sea rise is being caused by human activity. 
Maybe it's not. His opponent, Democrat Andrew Gillum, said it definitely is. You have said Florida needs thoughtful, sober leadership on this. Who gives you that? The Republican candidate for governor or the Democrat? Here's my message to Ron and to anyone else out there who thinks that it's okay to continue questioning this. Human beings are affecting the environment in an adverse way. That doesn't mean that we need to stop all economic activity. It doesn't mean that we can no longer enjoy the great outdoors or visit our national parks. But if we do not take care of our environment, it's going to hurt our economy. Uh, South Florida relies on a healthy environment uh, for its economy. We have a lot of fishermen, charter boat captains, right. obviously tourism. So to Ron and anyone else out there who is listening, accept the science. It's real. Let's start focusing on the solutions mm. that we need. And by the way, if we're going to get any solutions, we need Republicans okay. and Democrats working together. I don't care what your priority is. That would be nice on a number of great. issues. That would be nice. Guns, on the, number, the number national issues. debt, they're only going to get solved but, if we work together. That's my commitment to my community and to the country.